I hope everybody's rested, mentally prepared. Uh, I hope you guys, uh, uh, again, go always go back and re-watch, take notes, you know, never, never forget the past. Always build upon the past uh, with this new layer of present, okay? The future's over there. Uh, elbow muscles, radial ulna joint muscles, wrist muscles. Uh, you have some that function at both the elbow and the shoulder. Today's lecture is going to be a <laughs> shoulder lecture. So going back over elbow and radial ulna, you're going to hear a lot of, oh, yeah, I remember that at the elbow. I, I remember that at the radial ulna. Okay. So ball and socket, that means <clears throat> we're going to have muscles that cross in the front. They are going to be flexion pullers. What do we call flexion pullers? flexors. We're going to have lateral crossing muscles that are abduction pullers. We call those abductors. Behave, penguin. Abduction pullers, abductors. We're going to have posterior crossing muscles. Help me out here, buddy. We're going to call these extensors. We're going to have medial crossing muscles. We're going to call adductors, right? Inside muscles, adductors. We're going to have muscles that have obliquity that run in a direction to pull in a direction of internal rotation. We call those internal rotators. And then we're going to have posterior kind of obliquity muscles that pull in the direction of lateral or external rotation or external rotators. In addition, I'm going to teach you guys about the rotator cuff and um, how, well, you've heard this before, muscles aren't just involved in, ro in rotations, they're involved in translations for joint stability. We, we think about if you hold on to, to some heavy dumbbells, don't you feel kind of your arm muscles, your bicep, tricep? Yeah, because those muscles are on preventing your ulna from popping out of socket. So muscles work as stabilizers as well as r rotorizers. But the goal of the rotator cuff is I'm going to show you is, unlike the socket of the hip, look how big that socket is. And, and when you pull with muscles that are pulling in a direction of translation, it's literally... That, that femur gets stopped by the acetabulum and you have what they call a force couple. The bone pushing down and muscles pulling up, man, great torque, great uh, what we call a force couple action. This socket is a lot different. This isn't a deep socket. This socket doesn't encapsulate to push down on that humeral head. Okay, it's like a golf ball on a golf tee. So what we need is we need to encapsulate the muscle, not with bone, but with muscle. And the muscle's role is to keep the humerus on the golf tee, to keep the golf ball on the golf tee. Okay, And if that doesn't happen, then when you use muscles that are trying to translate the humerus up, the humerus will translate into this bone right here, this piece of the scapula called the acromion. And there's a muscle that lives up underneath there, and then that muscle could get pinched, grinded on. And if you're doing too much overhead stuff and you can't maintain the golf ball on the golf tee, you may start to have some problems. That's what they call impingement syndrome, um, a rotator cuff impingement. You've heard of that before, probably. So let's get to our muscles. All right. So, so, let me go turn off the light. Pretty big classroom. Uh, I do want to point out that... Um, you have a lot of muscles that do a lot of things at the shoulder, which makes sense. Your shoulder does a lot of things. Your, your shoulder, we have <clears throat> the trade-off of hip stability. Hey, you have some motion, but you don't have as much as you do in your shoulder. 
the trade-off of stability for mobility is a trade-off of injury prevention versus increased risk. But we're willing to trade that off because we need our shoulder to have more motion to do the things that we do with our upper extremity. That's the trade-off, guys. You can't have the best of both worlds. The more you drive, the higher your odds of getting into an accident. Kind of the same thing here. The more you move, the greater the odds your shoulder is going to get into an accident. Okay. So we have a lot of diverse muscles here. What I want to do is I want to break it down. Go hammer, go hammer, go. I want to break it down into our sections first. In other words, I want to identify shoulder flexors, shoulder extensors, adductors, abductors, internal, external rotators. To give you a chance, if you like lists, you can write down, confirm, clarify all the muscles in terms of their groups before we get into the photos where I show you, here's where they start, here's where they finish, here's how they cross, more importantly, okay? So let's see how that works. Sagittal plane direction motion pullers first, okay? Shoulder flexors, shoulder extensors, okay? We have the pectoralis major clavicular fibers. That's what PMCF stands for, the clavicular fibers. That's an area of the pec, that's a fan-shaped muscle. Anterior fibers of the gluteus medius and minimus, you've heard that before, okay? Anterior fibers of this, upper fibers of this. So clavicular fibers, that's another way of saying upper pec. You've heard that before, right? I'm gonna do incline press, work upper chest. Same thing, clavicular fibers. Then we have BBSH, biceps break eye short head. Biceps too, at the elbow, doesn't matter, they both have the same function both heads. But at the shoulder, there's a little bit of different. They both cross in the front, but the long head crosses laterally, so it has an abduction pull that the short head doesn't. So we have to separate the heads because they don't have the same functions at the shoulder. Short head of the bicep. CB, not corner bar, coracobrachialis. Okay, although it'd be nice, it'd be the uh, corner bar muscle. That'd be just kind of cool, all right? Petition to have CB be the corner bar muscle. Now, notice all of those three are in the front of class. How do we know? Look, I communicate to you. This is a, a circle of a cross section of a shoulder. That's the anterior posterior. And you're like, well, Dr. Campbell, I don't understand. Up and down, how's that anterior posterior? I tried to explain that I can't teach you here. I have to rotate it so that you can see everything on the inside. So if, if it helps you imagine uh, Frankenstein laying down and we're looking down on his shoulder or he's laying down. So we're looking like from his head onto his right shoulder his anterior, his posterior, lateral, medial. So these three sit the fence, right? So all they do is cross in the front. They have no medial crossing, lateral crossing. There's no rotational arrows. So those are going to be just simple shoulder flexors, only crossing in the front on the AP axis. And then we get to the biceps break eye long head. That's the one that goes through the bicipital groove. It has an anterolateral crossing, so it crosses in the front and lateral. It's going to be a, a flexion abductor, uh, abduction puller. And then AD, not Anthony Davis, uh, but the anterior deltoid. Again, the deltoid is a fan-shaped muscle. It is one muscle. I'm going to repeat that in a little bit. It's one muscle. We have an anterior fibers. We have posterior fibers. We have middle fibers. All of them have something in common but the different sections have different things in common, okay? Again, anterolateral, but look at the rotation circle. So that tells you there's some obliquity relative to the shoulder. So those are your shoulder flexors. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna just work our way around the circle. Let's go lateral, our lateral crossing muscles. Those are gonna be our abductors, abduction pullers. Biceps break eye long head, and then you have this supinator. I call that the what's up muscle, the supinator. Ah, bleh. super spinatus, man. I was back on radio on a joint. Grr. The, the super spinatus, that's one of your four rotator cuff muscles that maintains, it pulls in a direction of motion, but when it works with its teammates, like I call it the four horsemen, when it works with, that's a wrestling term, when it works with its teammates, there's a translatory effect to maintain joint stability in the lack of a big old socket with extra ligaments in there, okay? Kind of like a 
the, 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 the you know, regulators. They try to maintain uh, that uh, orthokinematic, uh, orthokinematics uh, joint translation motion. So supraspinatus, that is an abductor. Then we have this. Now this is where there's going to be a little bit of confusion. <clears throat> but that's why you listen to the lecture, and that's why I teach it to you so that you can make those notes and you don't, um, you don't miss it. Okay? With the light on my thing, it looks like, uh, remember Dumb and Dumber with uh, uh, Lloyd Christmas had like the haircut with the bowl over the head? That's what it kind of looked like. So anterior deltoid, middle deltoid, posterior deltoid. On the circle, it looks like three separate muscles. I did that because of the function anterior is going to have different function as the posterior, but they're all going to cross lateral. So what I'd like for you to do, you print this sheet out, is connect those three with a line. Connect those three to show you that it's all one muscle, and it's almost kind of like uh, someone balancing on a balance beam where their body is here, but then there's a left side and a right side. Or imagine uh, buckets on each side of the pole or the balancer, uh, the, the gym, the Circus performer doing a balance beam, there's buckets on each side. The buckets are connected by the pole. So maybe you can kind of connect these with a pole to show you that all of these guys cross laterally, but the anterior fibers cross antero and have obliquity, and the posterior cross postero and have obliquity. Okay, So it's one muscle with different sections that could pull in different directions. All right. So if I asked you how many abductors we have, one, two, three. Okay. Let's go to posterior crossing muscles. The posterior fibers of our deltoid. Then we have latissimus dorsi and teres major. That's what LD is. Okay. Um, T maj. Uh, medial crossing muscles, so not laterally, but inside, inside pullers, okay? Adductors, adduction pullers. Pectoralis major, triceps brachii long head. Notice the pectoralis major has obliquity. Latissimus dorsi, teres major. We call those sister muscles because they have the same function. They're both posteromedial crossing with obliquity that would spin a direction of internal rotation, okay? So we went around the horn. Flexors, one, two, three, four, five. Abductors, one, two, three. Extensors, one, two, three. Adductors, one, two, three, four. Internal rotators. Remember, this is a right, so rotation like this would be internal rotation. We have our anterior fibers of our deltoid. Then you have three muscles that are just spinners. Remember, we had that present in the hip. We had muscles that aren't antero, postero, lateral, medial. They just, in essence, they're just pulling on the ball. So if you were going to be an AB or a deductor, you'd have to cross outside or cross on the neck and pull inside. These are literally attaching to uh, the, the humeral head. So there is, there, there is no out, in, forward, back. In anatomical, it's only spin. It's only spin. And then because they... Some one crosses in the front, two crosses in the back. They can work together to translate, to pull down and in to make sure that golf ball stays on that golf tee. I get excited when I talk about maintaining law and order of the shoulder joint. So internal rotation pullers, you have the subscapularis, you have the anterior uh, deltoid. Um, in addition, you have your latissimus dorsi, your teres major, pectoralis major. You may be like, man, that's some big hoss internal rotators. And my answer is, yeah, that's some big hoss internal rotators because those drive the engine of throwing motions. In other words, when you go to throw, you have to have massive force for internal rotation. Hopefully you have road, you have range of motion, and you have force. But to make a baseball go 100 miles an hour like some of the pros do, you have to have some big-time engines in addition to some big-time road. So you're going to have more internal rotators than you have external rotators, a lot more. And you may be like, well, wait, is that why people hurt themselves a lot on the, on the negative acceleration, on the slowing down? That's where muscles can kind of tear and hurt. But yeah, you have a lot more gas in brake. And the reason is, I'm, I'm going to get to a muscle, but 
just to plant this seed, the reason you have more gas than brake is it doesn't matter if you slow down efficiently. If you can't speed your hand up, you may not hit that animal with the rock. You may not hit that animal with the spear. You may not throw that, 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 that ball as fast. In other words, we need speed here, so we're going to sacrifice more gas than brake. We'll worry about the brake when we get to it. We'll try to find ways to slow down our motion by dissipating it over time and doing some other things to help uh, that slowdown part. But the point is, is that if you don't make your hands go fast, you have less chance of uh, defending yourself, killing prey, uh, doing what we do exceptionally well. And that sequenced motion, we're getting the tips of our hands to move fast like the tip of a towel when you snap it, okay? External rotators, Terry's minor, uh, uh, Ilio Soaz. Oh, Brian, man, this is early in the morning. <clears throat> Infraspinatus, Terry's minor, <clears throat> posterior fibers of the deltoid, okay? <clears throat> Rewatch this first part if you need to uh, make your list. But all the list is on here in this circle. If you learn this circle, this tells you all the different functions. This tells you individual functions of specific muscles. This tells you all of the muscles in certain groups, flexors, extensors, abductors, adductors, internal, external rotators. Some people... <clears throat> we'll study with color coordinations. Uh, they'll print it out, highlight, or they'll have a, a, a key code where flexors, extensors, abductors, adductors, they'll do their little things. Okay, so lots of different ways. You do what works for you. And now I got a little mustache here going too. Man. <laughs> you do what's good for you. <laughs> Sorry. 17 minutes into the lecture. Okay, go back and edit that. All right. You ready to look at some muscles? Let's look at some muscles, man. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, we're going to start with the anterior compartment, um, anterior area, and we have a couple big daddy fan shapers. We have the pectoralis major, and we have the deltoid. Now, obviously, the deltoid kind of has some lateral and some posterior, but I like to look at this as one continuous fan. I, <clears throat> I know it's two separate muscles, but I really do like to look at it as a fan that just kind of starts and just branches all the way around the shoulder. I don't know why I got so expressive right there, all the way around the shoulder. But it's true, man. It 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 starts in the, you, you see the run of the fibers. Guys, the fibers are like strings and, and you can see the direction of pulls. Muscle, muscle fibers can only pull. So you could see the direction of pull. I'm going to bring my skeleton because sometimes I don't need my skeleton to help show uh, how these muscles pull. But pectoralis major. It has a sternal origin and it has a clavicular origin. Now, some people will say, well, the portions of the fan, you have up or you have lower. Eh, yeah, you have fibers that are low, but those lower fibers have the exact same line of pull as the middle fibers because what the string they're pulling on only pulls in the direction of adduction. Let me try to explain this with the, with the uh, skeleton. So, for your pectoralis major, I'm going to need the light on. Yeah, we're not going to do this in one lecture, okay? So no stresses. All right, you see these three blue strips? 
those are insertions of some different shoulder muscles. And the way I was taught to remember these is a lady between two majors. A lady, latissimus dorsi, lati, latissimus dorsi, between two majors. Teres major, pectoralis major. So look at this long blue strip out here. That's where your pec, that's where your chest muscle inserts. So it has sternal origin, it has clavicular origin, but when it crosses, it's all pulling on the same place. And in anatomical, this is a medial pull. So it's pulling in the direction of adduction. So these fibers are pulling in the same direction as these fibers because the rope that they're pulling on is just trying to do this. Okay. So all of the fibers of the pectoralis major, if you think about it, sternal origin, clavicular origin, comes in one string pulling here, anatomical position pulling in a direction of adduction. Adduction pullers, adductors. So the pectoralis major is an adductor. The clavicular fiber has obliquity to it. Um, obliquity, they all have obliquity in terms of trying to spin. But the clavicular fibers has an anterior cross as well, okay? It has a medial and anteromedial cross, meaning that it can pull the humerus up so that the humerus can be level with the clavicular fibers. So that means the clavicular fibers, if you look up on the screen right there, has a flexion component to its pull. You see pectoralis major, sternal, and clavicular. So the clavicular fibers are shoulder flexors, okay? All of the fibers do two things in common. All of the fibers of the pec are adduction pullers, adductors, and they're trying to spin in a direction of internal rotation pullers, so internal rotators. So let me clarify the functions of the pectoralis major for, you, for this class. In anatomical position, adductors, clavicular fibers, flexors, all of the fibers, adductors, and internal rotators. Adductor pullers, internal rotation pullers. Okay. Now, lucky you, the pectoralis major is a midway muscle. Think about it. One of the reasons people confuse ab and adduction towards the midline, away from the midline, is the concept of spin and translation. If you think about, if you try to keep things simple, pectoralis major is just trying to pull some of this neck, I know it goes a little further than that, but trying to pull this part of the humerus across, so horizontal adduction pullers. But my point is, is that when you're at 90 degrees, all of that pull is across, right? Horizontal adduction. When you're below 90 degrees, it's trying to pull the neck to the midline in a direction of adduction. But when you're past 90 degrees, and you got to externally rotate, that same pull is trying to pull the humerus to the midline in a direction of adduction. I'm sorry, abduction. Below 90, adduction puller. Above 90, abduction puller. Adductor below 90, abductor above 90, okay? It kind of makes sense. You feel, man, sometimes you feel very strong when you're doing a shoulder press. That pectoralis major can help pull that humerus to the midline, to the sternum, past 90 degrees, okay? It's another way of explaining why gymnasts have such a tough time holding that iron cross out here. Because at 90 degrees, that pectoralis major is like, dude, I can't, I can't be an adductor anymore. I got to turn off when you get here. Okay. All right. Now let's get to the deltoid. I think I'm going to leave the light uh, so that I could go back and forth to the skeleton. Deltoid. Think of the anterior fibers of the deltoid as, well, not really. They kind of have some similar uh, functions, but, it, but, but they don't have all. So what I want you to notice is the humeral head, if you see that little, uh, there's like a little gap in between the pec, the, the clavicular pec and the deltoids, okay? Uh, let's see if I could try to point with it. Let's go for a trip. 
Okay. You see that little dark spot right there? Okay. That little dark spot right there. The fibers on the left side pass underneath the head of the humerus. Thus, why they cross medial and they pull in the direction of adduction. The deltoid fibers cross on top of the humerus. So therefore, when they pull, they pull in the direction of abduction, abduction pullers. Now, they are pulling on this little blue spot right here. It's called the deltoid tuberosity. So they come over the top, and they're pulling laterally. Now, you have your anterior fibers, which cross anterolateral. So they're also pulling in a direction of shoulder flexion. They have obliquity to them. So they're pulling in a direction of internal rotation, internal rotation pullers, abductor pullers, and flexion pullers. So the anterior fibers of the, of the deltoid have three functions. Just the anterior fibers pull in the direction of flexion, internal rotation, and abduction. Then you have the middle fibers, not the medial, the middle. Medial is more on the inside. These, these are all lateral crossings. That could get confusing sometimes, but it's the middle because it's lateral. You can't have medial laterals, kind of a, a, a conflict of anatomical kinesiology interest. Middle fibers only pull in the direction of abduction in anatomical, okay? And the posterior fibers, these are more on the spine of the scapula. So, so spine, this is a chromium. So the middles are gonna be a chromium. The posterior are going to be spine. Once again, they cross lateral, abduction pullers. They cross posterior, extension pullers. And they have obliquity, external rotation pullers. So, on your test, on your test, if I say, what do all the fibers of the deltoid have in common? What function does all the fibers do? You'd say abduction pullers, abductors, pulling in a direction of abduction because the anterior and the posterior, if they're working at the same time, they're gonna cancel out sagittal and they're gonna cancel out transverse and they're gonna work with the middle to only pull in the same direction. Does that make sense? Again, that's a reason, justification why, when I say what's the function of all the fibers, you can't say flexion and internal rotation and extension and post You can't do all that stuff at the same time because they're going to cancel each other out. All the fibers only pull out. Okay? All right. Let's look at some more anterior fibers. We have our... Um, biceps right here at the bottom you can see how they blend into one common tendon have uh, two common functions one at elbow one at radiola joint but they split up they split up here one straight shot to what we call the coracoid process that's just a, a bony nub on the scapula that jets out anterior so that muscles can have better mechanical leverage while yanking on the scapula and that's here, right here. So you see that little red knob? Okay. All right. So the coracobrachialis is going to do exactly what it suggests. Starts on the coracoid process and goes to the brachial part of the arm. Crosses directly in the front. Look at that. Right on the axis. It's neither lateral nor medial. Right down the middle. Well, for the most part. Okay. So... Coracobrachialis has a sister muscle uh, that is the biceps brachii short head. So that's why you see these two little red nubs here biceps brachii short head, coracobrachialis. The long head of the bicep that goes anterolateral, and you have this groove, this natural um, a canyon. And what's really cool is this canyon is formed by muscles tugging. You remember Wolf's Law and specific adaptations to impose man? Well, you got muscles that pull on these bones. Those bones are going to lay down more bone. Sorry, those bones are going to lay down more bone to help the muscles tug on them more. Okay. 
So you get a natural canyon caused by this rotator cuff muscle that I'm going to get to in a little bit, and then these two rotator cuff muscles, and they're both pulling in opposite directions. Like you think about trying to open up something, trying to part the C. So you got two different rotator cuff muscles pulling in two different directions that's kind of opened up this groove for this long head of the bicep. Okay, so the biceps brachii long head is an anterolateral crossing muscle. That means it's going to pull in the direction of shoulder flexion and shoulder abduction. It's really important for not only, again, mobility, but stability, trying to keep that humeral head attached, keeping that humerus, keeping that golf ball on the golf tee laterally, okay? That's why sometimes when this bone gets stressed out of socket, it could pop that long head of the biceps tendon, okay? They, they, um, we'll get into that when I show you more muscles, okay, with labrum tears. Have you ever heard of a labrum tear? That's when that biceps break eye long head pulls a piece of that labrum. Labrum is just extra suction cup material on the, the, the golf tee to help the so, uh, ball stay on the socket. It's like a, a suction cup helps with, uh, with stability. Okay. Also, this is a posterior muscle, but it's better to look at it from the inside. You see that muscle through the ribs? That is called the subscapularis, the subscap. And you think about a submarine lives under the water. Subscapularis lives under the scapula. So here's our scapula. And you see all that red on the inside of the scapula? Maybe I need to roll him out a little bit. You see all that red up in here? That's where the subscap starts. Now, remember, function is crossing. It doesn't matter where a muscle starts. So you might think that because this muscle starts in the scapula, it has a posterior pull. And the irony is this muscle starts underneath the scapula, but it crosses the shoulder in the front, attaches on that little blue knob. So its pull is actually in a direction of internal rotation. Let me see if I could get his arm out here. Pulling in a direction of internal rotation, okay? That's one of our rotator cuff muscles. So again, it doesn't cross underneath, it doesn't cross over the top, right on the humeral head, right on the AP and bilateral axis, and it's only crossing the polar axis to pull in the direction of transverse plane motion, in this case, internal rotation. All right, next, muscles. Here's a great image of the deltoid working together, uh, the fibers of the one muscle working together to pull laterally, to pull in the direction of abduction, anterior, posterior, canceling out sagittal, canceling out transverse, working with the middle to just pull in the frontal, okay? In addition, we have some more muscles that I need to introduce you to. Um, the teres major, the teres minor, the infraspinatus, and the latissimus dorsi. Um, I, I think I have better individual pictures that I'm going to flip through, but I, but I want to introduce you to these, these uh, posterior crossing muscles, specifically the latissimus dorsi, which is my favorite skeletal muscle in the body. All right, let's get to function. Let's see, let's rotate you around, buddy. Okay, so let's start with the supra and infraspinatus, all right? So that's a reference to the spine of the scapula. And we have a muscle that lives on top, supra more on top, and then infra more on the bottom, okay? Now my finger is gonna represent the supraspinatus, you have, if you look at any, any skeleton, you're gonna see this red part that's kind of in that groove, that, that little uh, tunnel. You see how you see my finger passing through the tunnel? That's how the supraspinatus passes through the tunnel. Supra on top of the spine, and it crosses lateral, and it inserts on this top bony nub right here, okay? 
Now, its direction of pull is only in a direction of abduction. Abduction puller makes it an abductor. But that also is important for stability. Because think about it, drawing the humeral head in, preventing the humeral head from going out, drawing it in, just like the subscap draws it in, but it's also trying to spin it forward. We're going to have another one that draws it in, but spinning backwards, they cancel each other out in the transverse. They work with this supra to pull in a direction, translationally, to pull the humeral head in, individually, to try to pull the arm out, okay? What's really neat about the supraspinatus and the biceps break eye is they play this little crisscross applesauce game. Biceps break eye, long head, supraspinatus. So they have a very similar function at the shoulder. In fact, sometimes when the supraspinatus is impinged or it's being crunched upon because you can't keep the golf ball on the golf tee, that biceps break eye will kind of work more as an abductor and shoulder mover because this one's hurt and when you're hurt, you don't get recruited as much. And so then your biceps break eye long head will get irritated because it's doing more work than normal. It's going to get aggravated and start to hurt biceps tendonitis. Okay, so that's cool, that crisscross function. Let's keep moving down. Here's the spine. Infraspinatus is inferior to the spine. And then you have the teres minor right here. Those two are our final four of our rotator cuff muscles. So you look at the picture and you look at the infraspinatus and then your teres minor going to the humeral head, pulling postero, posteriorly, pulling in a direction of external rotation, but also trying to draw the humeral head down and in, okay? Then you have this, this teres major. Remember a lady between two majors? Well, this is the teres major, and it doesn't cross in the back. It actually crosses up in the front. So, lady between two majors, latissimus dorsi, pec major, teres major, comes here, pulls in a direction of internal rotation. But notice now, instead of pulling near the head, now it's more towards the neck. So that means you can visualize how it would be an adduction puller. It's an extension puller because it comes more postero to anterior, so it's going to pull in a direction of shoulder extension. So the teres major, shoulder adductor, pulling medially, shoulder extensor, pulling posteriorly, and internal rotator, spinning medially, pulling in that direction, right? Okay, next muscle on this picture, we're going to look at the triceps break eye long head, and uh, let me pull up a better picture of it. find a better picture of it because because the picture that I have on the PDF uh, doesn't cut it off triceps long head ah there we go that's a good picture okay okay snap a picture of that done save the photos okay guys so look at how that triceps long head inserts underneath the glenoid fossa an infraglenoid fossil insertion as opposed to the long head of the bicep which is supraglenoid on top so if you look at this muscle it's really just pulling medially it's it's pulling like an adductor muscle remember our adductors at the hip so the triceps break eye long head is a shoulder adductor. Uh, it gets commonly uh, misconstrued as an extensor. 
but I think that's because usually when we do arm stuff, we feel the tricep working, but it's usually working to prevent elbow flexion when we do like straight arm uh, exercises in the back. But what's important to note here is that that long head is not inserting back here where it would be an extensor. It's actually inserting right underneath. You know, it's on the axis. Okay, it's on the bilateral axis. Literally, look how lined up that is with, with, with the... Meh. Look how lined up that is. It's not back here. It's up underneath here. Okay. All right, latissimus dorsi, my favorite muscle. One of the reasons it's my favorite muscle is because this sucker covers a lot of ground. It starts, it has an origin on your pelvis. So it actually, even though I didn't, you're going to learn this in grad school, but the, 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 the lat has trunk function. Why? Because it starts from your pelvis and goes all the way up to your shoulder. So it has function every place it crosses. It's, it has scapula function. It has shoulder function. There's no other muscle in the body that has trunk, pelvic, scapula, and shoulder function. But you think about it, dude. The lat. You know, you're, you're cranking a lawnmower, dude. What's the transition from pelvic lower extremity to shoulder upper extremity and the latissimus dorsi? Tremendous, tremendously important muscle to function and sport and exercise, okay? For this class, I'm only going to teach you about the shoulder function, but let it be known. This muscle is magical. It has a lot more function than that, okay? So it starts posteriorly, but that doesn't mean anything. How does it function at the shoulder? Well, it inserts in the front. Remember lady between two majors? So it has an anterior insertion. So coming from the back to the front means that it's going to pull in a direction of shoulder extension, trying to bring the far front part of the humerus lined up with the back part of its insertion, I mean, of its origin. So an extension pull. Because it's pulling medially, it has an adduction pull. And then finally, the way it's spinning transversely, it has an internal rotation pull. So the latissimus dorsi at the shoulder Shoulder extensor, shoulder adductor, shoulder internal rotator. Big, powerful internal rotator. Your lats and your pecs are internal rotators. That's some big horses to try to make your hand speed up, okay? Now, this part should be easy. The teres major and the lat are sister muscles. They have the same function at the shoulder. So if you have one as an internal rotator, you got to have the other. So that's why they are uh, positioned in the circle the same way, because they have the same function at the shoulder circle. Let's see if I could find a better picture of the lat to show to better explain function with photos. It's a good picture of the lat. So again, you can imagine that lat reaching up to that humerus and pulling it down in a direction of adduction. If the humerus is in the front, trying to rotate the humerus to line up with the back part of the pelvis, pulling in a direction of extension to a certain extent. And then the last one, the internal rotation pull. Notice how that muscle disappears in the front, attaches near the lady between two majors and pulls right in between those two majors. This is the lady, okay? Pretty cool. Okay, let me see, uh, make sure I have all the, uh, the muscles. All 
Okay, so we talked about the pectoralis major, the clavicular fibers, and the pectoralis major, all the fibers. I want to point out that this is where things get a little tricky, but it's only because of a teaching. Remember, the circles are a teaching tool. So take note. You may say, whoa, there's redundancy there. Yes. All the fibers do these two things. All the fibers, pectoralis major, all the fibers. Pull in the direction of adduction in anatomical and try to spin you in a direction of internal rotation. Internal rotation pullers, adduction pullers. Only the clavicular fibers are shoulder flexors. So again, you could connect those things, but the redundancy is here because those fibers also pull these two different ways. But only those fibers pull that way. Does that make sense? I think that's probably the most confusing thing here. But again, as a teaching tool, that's why it is there. We talked about the biceps brachii short head, shoulder flexor. Its sister muscle core, cobrachialis, shoulder flexor. We talked about the biceps brachii long head in that groove, anterolateral, shoulder flexor, shoulder abductor. We talked about the deltoid. One big fan-shaped muscle. All the fibers have one thing in common, pulling the direction of abduction, making it an abductor. Anterior fibers also pull in the direction of flexion and spin in the direction of internal rotation pull. Posterior fibers pull in the direction of extension, pull in the direction of external rotation pull. Supraspinatus on top of the spine. Abductor but it's also tra trying to translate the humeral head in. That's why it's one of our rotator cuff muscles. You think about the rotator cuff as covering all your bases, and you think about it in baseball, right? So you have somebody covering first base, second base, third base, you know, kind of one way to look at it. All right, what about these sharpshooter spinners? Subscapularis, it's one of our rotator cuff muscles. Uh, infraspinatus, teres minor. So these are your rotator cuffs. Latissimus dorsi, big, powerful shoulder extensor, shoulder adductor, shoulder internal rotator. It has a sister muscle, the teres major, same functions. Triceps brachii, long head, adductor. I explained how it doesn't cross posterior, just pulls up underneath. Okay. So uh, what we'll probably do Wednesday is do some practice, some practice questions, and then I'll lead into the scapula. Scapula muscles. Cool. All right, guys. Hope all is well. Bye-bye.